<laughs> That's how you think all my jokes go, Tom. I do more than suck dick. I eat ass too. So, I'm getting older and I'm thinking about having kids now, right? Which is kind of weird because you should probably own more than three pairs of pants before you make a decision like that, but fuck it. Um, and I'm, th I'm thinking about it and thinking like, you know, I'm relatively smart and my genes are relatively, you know, I'm relatively in shape. My genes are relatively okay. And I start thinking about, well, you know, Oscar Wilde didn't have any kids and that's sad. But Billy Ray Cyrus had kids and that's all sad for a whole different reason. <laughs> So I guess what I'm saying is, I'm torn. I'm all out of faith. This is not really how I feel, but I'm cold and I'm naked, and I'm lying naked on the floor. For those playing at home, yes, it was a Natalie Imbruglia song. <laughs> uh, but since we're speaking about procreation, we'll stick with that topic. Uh, this is a little public service announcement to the, any of the ladies, heterosexual ladies out there. Ladies, please do yourself and the rest of us a favor and don't marry or fuck anybody that turns their t-shirts into tank tops. These guys should be avoided at all costs. Oh. The turning your t-shirt into tank top says three things about, about a, a fella. It says, one, they can only focus on one thing at a time because they've decided to work one area of their body consistently. <laughs> Luckily for them and for us on the gym and the bus on the way home, we get to smell their lovely odor. Two, it says they are not good shoppers. They have clearly gone to some sort of athletic store to purchase uh, apparel for the gym, but have bypassed the tank top section for the t-shirt section in an attempt to make their own shirts for arts and crafts time. <laughs> Uh, I'm not saying, that's not to say I'm anti-fitness or anti-working uh, out, far from it. Uh, I'm actually getting into soccer now, big soccer fan, anybody excited for World Cup? Nobody. Woo! You guys, you guys got to get on board, now's the time to get on board. Uh, I started paying attention in 2010, and now my club team, that's the team I support, is Arsenal. And for anybody out there, I'm going to pause here, because if there's one soccer fan, somebody will scream at me. My coworker is an Arsenal fan. Yeah, so I'll even get a woo, and I'm like, okay. I'm like, here's the thing about being about being a soccer fan. So I like the Bulls as well, and if the Pacers do well or the Timberwolves do well, and I meet a Pacers or Timberwolves fan, uh, good on you, and we can have a lovely conversation about basketball. Something about soccer knocks your IQ down 50 points, and you become a syllabic moron. Anytime somebody mentions another team, I immediately just turn into a rage-filled monster and scream at them. I don't understand it. No one understands it. It happens to all soccer fans. I'll tell you a story of when this got to be the worst. So I'm going home one time, driving home, and I see somebody in a Chelsea kit. That's another English soccer team. And I lean out of the car window, and I'm screaming every kind of expletive I can think. You fucking cut, Fuck you. I hope you fucking die. You're such a piece of shit. So on and so forth. So I get home, and my dad's mad at me, and he's like, why did you yell at your mother while she was out for her walk? And I'm like, she shouldn't support this bullshit team. <laughs> That was an awkward Christmas. <laughs> so my day job is in marketing, which is exactly as exciting as it sounds. And I didn't choose to be in marketing, it just kind of happened that way. I think it's really more because I'm a failed inventor, and none of my inventions are any good, so I had to go help somebody sell their own crap. But for your pleasure now, I'd like to show, share some of my inventions and see if you guys would be interested in, you know, bankrolling uh, ESCO, that's E-S dot C-O. <laughs> a lovely part of my last name. <clears throat> uh, first invention is tongue band-aids. You know when you're going down on somebody who shaved like a week before and their pubes are at that stage where they're not quite pubes yet, but they're really sharp and sickly, and then you prick your tongue, and then tongue band-aids. Or maybe you gargle razor blades professionally, tongue band-aids. Uh, my second invention is uh, for home defense, and that would be, uh, here, here's kind of my pitch for it. You know what sucks? Getting shot. Guns are an epidemic in this country, but we need to protect ourselves. So, with ESCO's new top-of-the-line gun that shoots knives, you can be in utter protection. 
So to diagram this out in your minds for you, a gun that shoots knives, it's basically like a blunderbuss, one of those old school kind of 1700s round guns, and you just dump a bunch of knives into it and fire it at anybody coming into your house. So what if you kill your mom in her sleep? You know, you gotta be safe. It's a good Looper's reference. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what. That's what I'm about. <laughs> that is funny. No, I was, I was if nobody got the word blunderbuss, please see the movie Looper. Um, seen and, Call of Duty. And the third one, and the third invention is um, basic is um, an insta freeze machine. So you know, so if you have something cold and you put it in the microwave, instantly hot, beautiful. But what if you have something that's melty or something that's not cold and you need it instantly cold, insta freeze, like a microwave except nine times the size and makes it makes things freeze because you know when you go to the grocery store and you buy a pint of ice cream and then you do other stuff no that never fucking happens <laughs> if you buy ice cream you go home immediately afterwards because you are not a moron so instant freeze has a very limited market and we'll have to figure that out please see me after the show for more <laughs> whatever um okay I'll keep going because now these two off the top of my head uh Um, I have more space now in the city, which is nice. I actually have a backyard in my apartment, and which means I've had the opportunity to start gardening, which is kind of cool. Landscaping I can do because I'm brown, so you give me a pot of plant and a, a rake and I'll build you a fucking tree. <laughs> but gardening's a whole nother story. And it's, it made, you know what, gardening made me think about that there's, everything we know is learned knowledge, right? We only know certain things because some other motherfucker had the unfortunate disadvantage of going before us. You know it'll look both ways before you cross the street, because some fucker got creamed by a, by a semi back in the 20s, and now we'll look both ways before we cross the street. <laughs> so that basically happened to me with a vegetable as I was gardening. Uh, so I plant a bunch of shit, and stuff starts coming up, and there's one thing coming up that I noticed I didn't plant. So I wait till it gets a little bit longer, and I snip it off. And I take it, I take it, the leaf and stem or whatever inside, and it's me and me and the Google versus plant. And I'm like an eight-year-old boy with a VHS porno. It says "Dirty Whores" on it, and I know there's titties on there, but I just can't get that tape to play. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm googling it, and I, having researched, having stared down vegetables in the grocery store for a month prior to this, I look, and I'm pretty sure it's chard. I don't know what the fuck. Still don't know what the fuck chard is, but. It, so I'm looking and the leaf's not quite right so I keep reading and it looks like Swiss chard but it's still not right and I come upon rhubarb and I'm like oh what the fuck is rhubarb so I start reading about rhubarb and in the meantime I've been taking bites of the leaf and bites of the stem and they both taste disgusting but I'm you know, <laughs> clearly not that bright and I continue to do it so I'm reading about rhubarb and the first thing I read is never eat rhubarb leaves they are highly poisonous <laughs> great when was the last time you threw up? Was it because you had gone on an all-night bender and you had too much to drink? Maybe you were sick home with the stomach flu. Or maybe you ate a weird thing that grew out of the ground because you have, la you have a lack of common sense and you were dry heaving on the, t on the, toilet f on the bathroom floor for 20 minutes. Um, so it turned out to be rhubarb and I almost died and that's the end of that story. Halloween's coming up for this next joke, which it actually is. <laughs> Ayo. Ayo, yay. So... If you're like me, every Halloween you decide to go to a party over going to five other parties, and every time you go to that party, you think that party sucks, and the other party you would have gone to would have been way better, and your Halloween blows, and you never remember it, and hello Christmas. Um, <laughs> the actually only good Halloween I've ever had was the worst Halloween I've ever had, and I'll explain why. And here it is. It's because everybody got punched in the face. I was there. Yeah. Everybody got punched in the face, and we'll, let's Tarantino this, and I'll tell you how this happened. <laughs> Since you already know the ending. So, back when we were in, when I was in my early 20s, and it was, you could go all night and drink all night, it was one of those nights, and we were headed to the classy establishment known as the local VFW Hall. <laughs> so, we head over to the VFW Hall, which has $2 plastic cups full of beer foam for sale, so we got drunk on the right price of $20. So we're hanging out, everybody's drinking their foam, and <laughs> everybody's drinking their foam. Just slurping it up. It's slurping it up. Everybody's drinking their foam, and uh, this girl runs up to my friend and says, please start talking to me, there's a creepy guy who won't leave me alone. 
which happens on Halloween all the time. So my friend obliges and starts talking to her and she's pretty and whatever. So I had gone to this party with a few friends, two of whom are my roommates, both of which are brothers, one who is 6'5", 270, wearing a giant pink bunny costume. <laughs> So we're talking to this girl, helping her out, and Pink Bunny wanders over and says, what's up? And my, our, the other roommate, his brother, points out the creepy guy who has been staring at us the whole time and says, that guy was bothering this girl, and now we're talking to this girl. And drunk Pink Bunny looks and says, that guy? I know that guy. He was a prick in high school, and he's a prick now. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> So the night continues, and as the lovely establishment that is the VFW Hall is winding to a close, they kick us out, and the festivities spill into the street. At this point, the Pink Bunny decides to walk up to the creepy guy of the evening and tell him, you were a prick then, and you're a prick now! The creepy guy who has had who knows what at this point decides to sucker punch the giant Pink Bunny in the side of the head, and a fight breaks out. So now... Our friends are fighting other people, other people are fighting us, other people are fighting other people. It's just a general melee. The pink bunny proceeds to pick up the other man, <laughs> you heard me, I said man, and slam him into a flower bed and then rain haymakers on him like nobody's business. It's fun to watch. Um, and then, I swear people, I am not making this up, there are people here in the audience who can validate the validity of this story. <laughs> a beige four Taurus pulls up and four superheroes jump out. The goddamn Avengers are here. I'm like, yay, we're saved, superheroes. But oh no, they were on the side of the creepy guy. Oh no, we're the bad guys. My worldview is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so they proceed to start fighting everybody. And being superhero, wearing superhero costumes was not an in-joke. They are good at fighting. Now everybody is getting punched in the face. So our one friend, the, the other brother, who is considerably drunk, is being held back by another friend. He gets so upset that his brother is getting pulverized, he punches our friend in the face to let him go. That's two people punched in the face. He runs headlong at the man, and the superheroes pile back into their to their car and drive away, which means I knew they weren't the good guys, because they were clearly... Oh, fuck, I had a nerd joke there, and I forgot it. Um, I knew... Oh, uh, so the superheroes pile back into their fucking Ford Taurus and drive, drive away hastily. Letting me, leaving me to believe that they were in fact the bad guys and that we were in fact the good guys. Some Earth 2 bullshit. <laughs> um, oh, fuck. I'll, I'll back up. Um, so this time police sirens are on the way and I walk in, so I decide to get my pussy ass off of the sidelines and walk into the melee and try to calm everything down since clearly the cops are on the way and everything will be fine. At what point I turn to talk to Wolverine and uh, lay some common sense into him and say, you know, it's okay, don't worry, no, we don't have to fight anymore, and proceed to get punched in the face. <laughs> don't get punched in the face, it hurts so bad. <laughs> your teeth cut the inside of your cheek, it's just a hot plate of garbage. Uh, they take off, leading me to believe that... Fuck. Mm, I'll work that out later. Uh, they take off, cops show up, and Halloween night ends. So the best Halloween I've ever had is a great Halloween. Thank you, good night.